You know what people want to know the most right now? Pastor, tell us how we can prevent these demons from attacking our finances, our life, our children, our home, our families. Give us that recipe. Here's the thing. Good morning. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. The last day of July. I pray that the last two weeks uh, or the last week that we shared with you some very deep stuff that you took heed and you start to follow in the next few weeks because these recipes are going to be key to you overcoming all the struggles against the dark forces that are trying to obliterate your life the depression, the thing what you may look at as bad luck, you must realize that all these attacks against you are orchestrated attacks. They are not random and they are not a coincidence. Everything that happens is because the enemy is tasked to attack every child of God. And a point of note, the closer you try to get in relationship with God, the more intense the attacks may seem. But the revelations I'm going to give you in the next week, the last week, and today, are going to set you on a platform to launch your own attack against these dark forces. King Solomon, who was renowned as the greatest, wisest king of all time, had encounters with these spirits in detail. And God revealed to him the weapons a child of God needs to use when these forces try to oppress you. You must remember this. When kings rule over Israel, they generally make notes, they keep a diary and they record the events that happen in their lifetime. They take these records when the kings die and they place it in chambers, in annals, underneath the palace in safe rooms. When Israel came into exile, some of the top priests carried these journals of the kings into Babylon, into exile, because the Babylonians that came and oppressed Israel took over Jerusalem and they didn't want these, the writings of these kings to be mislaid. So they carried it into exile and in exile, the, the priests made a codex, a collection of kings who wrote journals. And this collection is known as the Babylonian Talmud. The Old Testament documents were carried into Babylon for safekeeping by the priests. In case when they invaded the temple, they would destroy the king's writings. Now, you will find that this scripture, the Testament of Solomon, is one of the writings in the Babylonian Talmud. In fact, the same Babylonian Talmud was carried back to Israel, to Jerusalem, when the temple was rebuilt. And the Talmud contained, when Jesus was preaching in the synagogue, the Talmud contained this document, the Testament of Solomon. The fact that Jesus was holding it in his hands and using it to exhort from tells us that this document 
is verified by the master himself. So when we read what Solomon wrote to us, his experiences as a king, we cannot take this with a pinch of salt. It is deep secrets revealed to the wisest man who ever lived. So let us take a peek at last week's introductory uh, passage that we read from this book of Solomon. The Testament of Solomon, son of David, who was king in Jerusalem and mastered and controlled all the spirits of the air and on the earth and under the earth. First, we are introduced to the son of David. He used wisdom to master and control demons. It goes on, by, all, by means of them, also he wrought, that means fashioned or shaped, all the transcendent, that means um, works that are above normal quality, works of excellence, transcendent works of the temple, telling also of the authorities they wield, the devil uses authorities, demons use uh, tools against um, a man, the demons who are known as the authorities, they wield against man. And by what angels these demons are brought to naught. So this introductory passage has tremendous value. It sets the platform for what King Solomon is about to reveal to us. So we learn that he controls demons. We also learn through the reading that he, he used these demons to help him in the construction of God's temple so that it can receive a measure of excellence that has never been seen on earth. He also reveals to us the type of tools, methods, these demons use against human beings. And then he also goes on to tell us what methods we can use to counteract what these demons do against us. I'm going to share with you those particular details in weeks to come. So please stay tuned. Remember, these sermons last week and uh, the week before, I think, were not on our main YouTube channel because the channel was blocked for a couple of weeks. So we put these sermons onto the second YouTube platform. I want you therefore to make sure that you register, subscribe, it's free to both channels. So if one is not working for that week, you are able to receive and catch up to where we are. So please stay tuned, send these messages to whomever you love so that they too can benefit. And I'm sure when you are listening, you are growing spiritually. Now, one of the things I'm going to introduce you to in the next few weeks, I'll give you a little taster for now. Solomon discovered that Uriel, the mighty archangel of God, has been given charge over Hades. Now, we know that the realm of Hades is controlled by Satan. But whatever happens within that realm is still in the hands of God for he put his own angel to make sure that whatever commands are given that he monitors it. So God's angel, God has his eye on the underworld and he has his eye on our world and the heavens. There is no place that you can escape the hand of God. So Uriel is in charge of these, this area, this underworld. He has been given a responsibility. 
He has the authority in that world. And so even though there are dissenting demons who, who defile God's ways, but when a command comes through Uriel, that command even demons have to obey. And so what Solomon learnt through his wisdom and by the grace of God, that Uriel, when you ask an angel to perform something for you, to do something for you, you are, if you are in God and you carrying the, 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 the coat of God, the authority of his kingdom, you are in right relationship with God. You have the authority to command angels so that because you are joint heirs, remember, with Christ. Initially, in the life of Adam and Eve, I even taught you that all angels, as mighty and reverent as they are, God commanded them to bow to, um, to Adam simply because Adam was the only creature that was made with the breath of God. And so this Uriel, the archangel of God, you can command him with the greatest of respect once again. You cannot treat them like they are servants. You have to have tremendous respect. Uriel, I ask you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ to make sure that these spirits that are coming against me do not prosper. And Uriel under his command has mighty angels that when they speak, demons will have to tremble. And Solomon learnt that when you are in right standing with God and you speak to, these, to, to Uriel and ask him for assistance, whatever demons may come against you will be brought to naught. You know, I, I wrote in my book, I can't remember whether I mentioned this to you before. But there was once upon a time, when I was very young in ministry, I was learning about this, the spirit world for many years. I'm talking over 25 years now, ago. Um, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm mistaken. A little less than that, maybe 22 years. I'll tell you why I'm saying that. Because the time just before we opened Trinity International, uh, one of the, the men that was a pastor before, he was fellowshipping at the church where I was serving as a pastor. And his wife made a phone call to me. And when she spoke, she said, you know, brother so-and-so is going through a uh, a traumatic time. I asked her what's wrong. She said he's, he looks possessed. And can you please come? Now at that time, I was a, a baby pastor. I didn't know as much as older ones. All I did know is that my relationship with dad was very strong. So, what happened when we reached that home? It was evening. I walked through the door. There was no need to knock because the door was wide open. I was hearing screams coming from an inner room. The lounge was full of men and women. And they, were, they, they had the look of concern on their face. And when the wife saw me from a distance, she came and told me that this man, her husband, is very seriously possessed. And they don't know what to do. She informed me that a few pastors were in the same room with him trying to deliver him. And so I walked down this passage and when I turned my head to the left, the room was on my left hand side, I turned to the left to see what was going on in the room. 
There were quite a few pastors in there trying to cast the spirit out. And so when I, when I looked in that direction, that spirit that was in this man turned to look into my direction directly into my eyes. Once again, my experience in this world was just beginning. It was terrifying to see when a demon takes over the eye, it seems like a lifeless being is behind those pupils. When they stare into your eyes, it is a hair-raising experience. I'm standing there watching and these pastors are throwing salt on this man. Because from traditional belief in Christianity, they believe... I don't know whether they extracted it from the, the, the tradition of other religions, but they were throwing salt on him. And, and, and this, this demon, you know, I have to tell you about salt. Why they think so? Some of the people, when, when, they, when, they, when they want prayer and they don't want demons, they're dreaming of things, they, they put around their bed some salt or or they, they sprinkle salt when they're traveling so that they feel that demons won't attack them. And one of the reasons, the old wife's tale, this is by the way, is that, you know, when, when, when in those days, many, many centuries ago, salt was a very valuable commodity. And so they believed that if they left enough grains of salt behind, when the devil follows them home, the devil will stop and pick up the salt pieces one by one so that they'll be gone by the time the devil finished picking up. So that's the tradition. And these pastors were blasting this man with salt. This demon that was inside was sticking out his tongue at least 20 centimeters and licking his whole face full of that salt. And he's trying to tell them that salt can do nothing. To him and so he 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 was pushing these men around and he was fearful listen I I was thinking to tell this his wife listen I, I, I'll come back some other time but you know the courage that God gave me the thing that you need to have when you're dealing with demons is not to be scared I'm gonna show you that in a moment but I I braved through and I stood at the entrance to that door. And when the man tried to throw the salt, he turned, that man, that demon inside, turned to the pastor and showed a sign as if he's going to cut his throat. Let me tell you that is very scary because this man seemed to have superhuman power. And he was big size in nature too. He then proceeded to catch the pastor around his throat and he lifted him off the ground against the cupboard. Now it was the time, if any time I need to run, it's now. But God made me come one more step in. And then I looked at this, this listen to me, this was a demon, this was not a dead spirit. And that's why I'm relating this story to you. This was a demon I was looking at. And this demon looked in my direction while he got this pastor in his grip. And something spoke once again like it did what I mentioned last week. I looked into that spirit's eyes and I said, I respect you. And he took a step back. He left the pastor down. He turned in my direction and he said, I respect you too. You know the book of Jude talks about having respect. You can read it if you, if you want further insight. And this spirit looked at me and he said, I respect you too. I got a bit of a stun because he calmed down. It's almost as if the men that were around him were not showing him respect. And they were throwing things like salt. They were throwing the Bible at him. And he began to react. And so I walked few steps towards him with one 
half of my mind thinking, what if he throws me up in the air? And, and I took the step by faith. I looked him in the eye. And I had a small conversation with him. And I, he sat against the bed. And he looked up into this, my right hand side. He looked, he's sitting on the bed now. And almost leaning backwards while I'm standing over this big size man. He's looking to my right hand side, up into the, into the ceilings almost. And I said, what's wrong? He said, Michael. Which Michael? Archangel. I said, where did you see him last? He said, he the one kicked us out. And he says, please, tell him not to touch me. And I, 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 was, I, was, I was taken aback, beloved. And he, the fear, the once fierce look in his eyes changed to fear. And I asked him, where did you come from? He says, this little boy, when he was a baby, his mother wanted to throw him into the bay. His father wanted to throw him into the bay. Not his mother, sorry, his father carried him in his arms and wanted to throw him into the bay simply because the man's wife had a relationship with another man and this child belonged to that other man. So the, the husband wanted to throw this child into the lake, into the bay. And that's the time I was hovering over the waters and I entered his body. And from that time I've been with him. Now I want you to think about this. This man was a spirit, a demon was inside of him from the time he was a baby. This man became a pastor of people. This man was leading people. While he had a thing inside of him that was not of God. Can you imagine the devastation that this spirit would have caused could have caused and has caused on all the people that sat under the ministry of this man. I, I can't even begin to think of the damage that was done. And at that moment when he confessed this thing, he looked up at me and he says, tell him not to touch me. I'm going. And in a split second, this man that was jumping on top of the bed, trying to throttle people, he was lame. And the spirit left and the man came back to normal. In fact, even I was stunned. It was an experience that will remain with me for the rest of my days. I felt so honored by God that his angels are commanded concerning me. And the reason Michael stood at my side was because I made a pact with God. I am entering into this very dangerous world, Lord. I need you whenever I am encountering demons. I need you to send with me your chief archangel in charge of warfare. I need Michael at my side when I am in trouble. And so when this man possessed demon looked up and saw Michael and when it's all finished and done, I, 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 had, I had to take Days to reflect on how God honored my prayer. And this is the power of knowing which angels to choose for which assignments. How to get help. But it doesn't come overnight. It comes with much prayer, much fasting, much dedication, much sacrifice. You need to take the world away from you so that you can you can have this authority. There are certain times God allows you to go through certain things. That's within his responsibility for allowing you. But beside all that, when the devil tries on his own to destruct you, to destroy you, to, to move you from your assignment, that's the time you need to invoke your rights as a child of God. So this 
secrets that I'm giving you. I want you to embrace them with everything you have. Because the world is going to attack you from all sides. You need the power, the full authority and host of heaven beside you. Now let's get back to where we were last week. Solomon had a master builder building the temple. And master builder had a son. He was still a little boy, but he was working with his dad in the temple. Solomon loved this little young man. And he paid him double. But despite that, this boy, when he went home, a demon came at night to visit him. And that demon stole uh, all his or half his money and his food. Now, I don't want you to think of this as a, in a literal sense. Because some people who are going through oppression, through spiritual oppression, you will sense that things diminish in your house, that you work twice as hard and you get half what you're working for. So this is sort of the thing that was happening to this man and, he, and this boy. And he was losing weight so much so he's becoming thinner every time Solomon would see him. And so one day Solomon called him and said, listen, I'm giving you double the wages. Why are you not eating? Why are you looking like you're thin, you're hungry, you don't have food? And so this young boy went to Solomon and he told him what was going on. Let's read from the testament of Solomon. Now when I, Solomon, heard this, I entered the temple of God and prayed with all my soul, night and day, that the demon might be delivered into my hands and that I might gain authority over him. And it came about through my prayer that grace was given to me from the Lord Sabaoth by Michael his archangel. Now you see that word Sabaoth. Most people assume that they're looking at the word Sabbath. It's actually Sabaoth. That same word you will read in the book of Romans chapter 8, 9 verse 29. And as Isaiah said before, unless the Lord of Sabaoth had left us a seed, we would have become like Sodom and we would have been made like Gomorrah. The Lord of Sabaoth. That means... In the archaic version, the hosts of heaven. That is our king. He is the host of heaven. He is the Lord of the hosts of heaven. Let's read that again. And it came about through my prayer that grace was given to me from the Lord of hosts by Michael, his archangel. He brought me a little ring. Michael brought him a little ring, having a seal consisting of an engraved stone, and said to me, Take, O Solomon, son of David, the gift which the Lord has sent thee, the highest sabbat. With it, Thou shalt lock up all demons of the earth, male and female. And with their help, thou shalt build up Jerusalem. But thou must wear the seal of God. And this engraving of the seal of the ring sent thee is a pentalpha. Beloved, what you didn't know. We'll get into those, things, those words just now. But what you probably don't realize, Solomon was given power to command demons. Not only that, he was able to make them help him to do God's work. We, we'll, we'll try and get into that in next week's sermon. But this power was given to him in the form of a seal on a signet ring 
that seal was called a pentalpha. I'm going to introduce you to that in a moment. But that's the seal that gave him authority to rule over demons. And as long as he was wearing that pentalpha ring, he was able to control demons, to stop them from attacking him, and also he was able to tell them or command them to help him to build God's temple. What a, what a revelation that is. So when you are being pinched by demons all the time, when they're attacking your finances, you can actually command them to build your finances. You, if that's the will of God, everything has to be within the will and realm of God. That's the temple. So God was using Solomon and telling Solomon, you tell them to help you build this temple. That's, so when it comes to God's kingdom, you can command demons to help you. to. Build. So when it comes to even, even today, when you are improving the kingdom things, when you are helping the kingdom prosper, when you are paying your dues to God, contributing to the furtherance of his work, when you're putting effort in, in some way or the other, then you have the power to command demons to help you with your finances. Lord, I want that same power that you gave to Solomon. I don't have that pentalpha. But what you do have is the blood and authority of Jesus Christ. You see, you don't need the pentalpha anymore. Simply because Jesus transfer that authority onto you as his church before he couldn't do that with Solomon so he gave him a signet ring but today he can transfer the authority onto man because man is now today those who are heirs with him joint heirs with Christ he transferred authority onto the church so the same privilege Solomon had using the ring you have using his name. A pentalpha looks like this. It's that what we learned about a, a, an upside down pentagram. The pentalpha was known or is known as the seal of Solomon. In fact, quite strangely enough, it became known as the star of David. And that's ironic because David came before Solomon. There was no Pentalpha before Solomon. So some, you, you know, listening to me, you probably know more than the Jews by now. Because they will never be able to tell you why they celebrate the star of David. It is on the Israel's flag since the 1940s. That is the symbol that Jews use. And they think that that symbol is valid now as a protection against powers of darkness. Now this is the direct opposite. You see when you look at the Pentalpha, you will see one, uh, uh, the apex of the of the, of the top triangle is pointing upwards. But when you look at the pentagram, it's an inverted pentalpha. When you look at the pentagram, it's got two horns, two uh, vertices facing upwards. And that's an inverted pentalpha. Now the reason the devil uses this is because when the pentalpha locks demons, the the, the pentagram unlocks it. It turns it around and releases demons. That's why when Satan worshippers worship, they use the pentagram to release demons and not bind them like what the Star of David or the Seal of Solomon was used to do. This is an important thing. That's why when you see these symbols... When people engage in this sort of magic and, and soothsaying and rituals, summoning dead people and all that sort of thing, it's actually unleashing, opening demons to be released. 
And when, when you see these things happening, they'll be on television uh, movies, you'll see them, uh, some music videos of these pop artists. It is the same as the horn sign. That it, it, it's, it's very similar. It's, they're not using the, pen, the, the pentagram anymore. They're using to unlock and unleash demons. They'll use the, the horn sign. That is the sign I spoke to you about. All musicians, actors, presidents, all of them use it, including the Pope. They use it to unlock demons to into the world, into their music, in, to influence their success. This is what unlocks. Now, if that is going on, you cannot un, undo that. You can't bind demons anymore through the pentalpha. You got to do it with the blood of Jesus over your family, over your life. And these people don't realize that when they do that sign and unlock demons, they want these demons to be unlocked in their favor, to boost their success, to boost their money. What they don't realize is that any foundation that is built on the releasing of demons is meant to bring you down. So you might climb up a very high ladder, live a very lavish lifestyle, but two things will, will happen. One is that at that height, the devil will remove the carpet and you will come flying down. Because that's what demons do. And the second thing that they will do, which you need to remember, especially if you are somebody who's used these powers before to elevate yourself. Maybe you're thinking, let me join the Illuminati. Uh, let me worship Satan. At least I'll be able to get things I can't get now. Listen, you have to learn this. The people who use these spirits to unlock and release demons into their lives to help them progress, the thing that is worse for them is that they will never have peace. They'll have all the money They'll go to all the places in the world. They'll be elevated on television and in the media and all that. So they'll, they'll be very high profile uh, characters. But the problem is that inside of them, they will never find peace. Because there is only one that can give you peace. There are people with not much things. There are people who don't have much, but what they do have is peace. That's because the Prince of Peace, you cannot have that peace without him. And so these celebrities, these people who worship Satan, they'll divorce, they'll have affairs, they'll have children, the children will be gone astray, they'll be on drugs, they'll be on alcohol, they abuse children, there's a whole range of things even came out about Oprah recently, probably will share with you in the coming weeks. Somebody you admire, somebody you respect, or maybe even love. And it feels good. I mean, if you're seven years old and somebody, which I was trying to say this to my friends who had children, you're seven years old and someone is stroking your it feels good. Right. Even though you don't have a name for what that is, it feels good. And when I first said this years ago, people were like, you're crazy because everybody wants to believe it's like sexual assault and you're being thrown up against the wall and you're being raped. Mm -hmm. And I have said for years, if the abuser is any good, mm -hmm. it, you won't even know it's happened. But uh, you find that she's, she was involved in, in pedophilia. She was involved with people who were pedophiles. She was, and, and, and look at the status, the richest woman in the world in terms of entertainment. Now, the thing that she will not have, and as will many of these celebrities, they won't be able to find comfort and peace. That's why many kill themselves. Many die of diseases and sicknesses, and, and they're just not happy. And so, take heed of that. These demons are very, very destructive. Let's go back to the Testament of Solomon. And I, Solomon, was overjoyed and praised and glorified the God of heaven and earth. And on the morrow, I called the boy and gave him the ring. 
and said to him, Take this, at the hour in which the demons shall come unto thee, throw this ring at the chest of the demon, and say to him, In the name of God, King Solomon calls thee hither, and then do thou coming, come running to me, without having any misgivings or fear in respect of what thou mayest hear on the part of the demon. There's that part Solomon tells us. That when you are encountering these spirits, you must have no fear whatsoever. You see, because he carried this ring, Solomon told him, you carry this ring and you throw it at the demon and command him, no matter what you might hear him telling you, you must have no fear. So if you're going to go into battle with darkness and you carry fear and you carry worry, that's why when you realize, hey, my children are being attacked, this is happening, and you fear, oh, what am I going to do? That's a loss of faith. Uh, how am I going to manage? I'm, you know, the devil is attacking my finances. I don't know if I'm going to be able to pay my rent. You know, I don't know when church is going to open. I need to stand in the front. Pastor need to lay hand on me. Something. Listen, if you have that attitude, the devil will swallow you up and spit you out again. So you cannot have fear because you might not have the ring of Solomon, but you got the blood of Jesus. Now it's just not one man with that authority or whoever that one man gives that ring to. Now it is every child of God carries that power. So I am not unique. There's nothing I can do for you that, that is unique. It's the same authority that I have, you have. The problem is, your relationship with God needs to get tighter. You cannot live a haphazard life, anyhow life, and expect God to give you that authority to speak to demons. Verse 8, we'll continue. But the child said to the demon, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, I will not brook thee. That means tolerate thee. So the boy was bold with this demon. So come hither. And the child came at, at a run, rejoicing to the king and said, I have brought the demon, O king, as thou didst command me, O my master. And behold, he stands before the gates of the courts of thy palace, crying out and supplicating with a vo loud voice, offering me silver and gold of the earth, if I will only bring him unto thee. And when Solomon heard this, he rose up from his throne and went outside into the vestibule of the court of his palace. And there he saw the demon shuddering and trembling. And he said to him, Who art thou? And the demon answered, I am called Onias. And Solomon said to him, Tell me, O demon, to what zodiacal sign thou art subject? And he answered, To the water pourer. And those who are consumed with desire for the noble virgins upon the earth. These I strangle. But in case there is no disposition to sleep, I am changed into three forms. Whatever men came to be enamored of woman, I metamorphose myself into a comely female. And I take hold of the men in their sleep and play with them. And after a while, I again take to my wings and hie me to the heavenly regions. Hie means hurry, hurry up, hurry to the heavenly regions. I also appear as a lion and I am commanded by all the demons. I am frustrated by the archangel Uriel, the power of God. Here we go, we're talking about Uriel being in charge of that dimension. Now, when we look at astronomy, we're going to deal with a few things so that you get knowledge. The water pourer has uh, manifested in the form of the zodiac sign, Aquarius. The, Aquarius is the water bearer of the zodiac. Aquarius symbol is the water bearer signifying finer energies brought down to earth. 
Aquarius hears what others don't and brings a seer's perspective to day-to-day -day event, events. This is a group and friend oriented sign known for its interest in causes that advance humanity. There's a few things about the sign of the zodiac. Now you must remember astronomy. All these signs, Aries, Leo, Jupiter, or no, not Jupiter, there, Sagittarius, all these signs of the zodiac are controlled by demons and the water bearer is controlled by Onias. And therefore, when you're following these signs, you know, this week will be, uh, you'll have good luck, you'll meet one man this week, you're not going to be lonely. All those things, they, they want to put hope in you, but who controls this thing? It's actually a release of finer energies. And we know that those energies are dark energies. When you release that into your life, it's going, when you embrace those astronomers, uh, astrologers, sorry, when you, I said astronomy all the time, it's like astrologer, when you follow all these astrologers and what they teach, and you, you dedicate your life, you wait for that magazine to come and look at what the signs are telling me, what's going to happen, because you're so eager, you're so desperate for change in your life. If, when you do that, you invite these finer energies. There's that article that tells you the people who conduct these things, signifying finer energies brought down to earth. Now that's what Onias does. He brings down finer energies and he conducts seeing, seer. We read that just now. It's Aquarius hears what others don't and brings a seer's perspective. That means a prophet, prophetic perspective into people's lives. It's group orientated. And there we go with the meta. Friends. Facebook friends. Group orientated. Facebook groups. Group orientated. This spirit puts finer energies into those places. And these are the energies that cause depression, hate among people who are supposed to be friends. And that's why when people friend you, you find they, 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 they become abusive. If you post something, some people will say negative things. And every time you look at a post, you feel depressed. Why aren't you living that kind of life? Why aren't you happy? Why your husband didn't give you flowers like that man gave his wife? And you look at those things and it, it hurts you. These finer energies are designed to cripple you. You don't realize that when people do these things, they, they want to make themselves feel nice. But when you look at it, you think that's real. Some people, they, they didn't, they, they just posted, but they're miserable inside, but they just posted. But whatever it is, the designed finer energies that come through the social media, it's designed to hurt you. It's controlled by Onias. Meta, Facebook, from the dead, from the world of Hades. Now this is being told to us centuries, millennia before today by King Solomon. That's why it's concerning humanities. That's why every group you see, including UNICEF and all the others, whenever you see an organization, just to let you know this, you've got to be smart now. Whenever you see an organization promoting um, any humanitarian aid, uh, the green earth, um, safety for children, all these things, these are controlled by demons. Many of these people that want to house children and, and, and prevent human trafficking of children, that's what Oprah was doing also, oh, you prevent human trafficking for children. These are the people that are in, in the front line of the abuse. So the, the finer energy that controls them is Onias. But Onias has demons and spirits that he's subjected to. So there's, there's a different world in that avenue. So devil attacks the world from different places, different energies, different uh, uh, sections of society. It, it, so I'm just teaching you about some of the things the Aquarius, the water bearer does to the earth. Anything you say, anything you do, that's what Aquarius says. They listen 
they can hear. You remember last week I told you, my experience when God told me I'm building my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. He told me that in my spirit. He told Nash that in her spirit. But when we discussed what he told both of us, we discussed it loudly. So they can hear everything. They know everything. That's why they know at which point to attack you. You know what people want to know the most right now? I can even feel it. Pastor, tell us how we can prevent these demons from attacking our finances, our life, our children, our home, our families. Give us that recipe. I'm going to get into details next week. But for now, here's the thing. You see, there's many people that want solutions and they want it quick. Now I'm talking to you. You know when people, many of you, you know when people hear the sermons like this or they read the book, they want instant gratification. They want that the problems must be solved instantly. They don't want to put effort into getting the issue sorted out. They don't want to put the effort to pray or to fast or to talk to God. They don't want to reconstruct their life. They want to keep doing and going to the same places, doing the same things as they were before, but they want a different result. So when you come to me, I have to lead you on a path of reshaping your mind so that when your mind is reshaped, you are able to tap in to the power source of God over your personal life. It will never be perfect, your life. Neither will mine be. But overall, inside of us, we will have peace. We'll be able to prosper where others fail. We'll be able to stand when others, the wind blows down. This is what I want to give you. How do we do that? And so, every time, if you want to reconstruct your life, I want you to go back to the YouTube channel. The first one, the second one, and I want you to look slowly and take in everything I'm teaching you because your, your mind will gain wisdom. And wisdom was the secret to Solomon's success and the knowledge God him, gave him. And so, slowly, as you embrace God, the power will start to flow. You don't need the finer energy of Aquarius. You need the mighty energy of God to empower your prayer, to empower you. And so, the, sometimes when people come to me and they want assistance, they just want that one of prayer and they gone back to where they were. Where they were sitting and listening, where they were being fed spiritually, it did nothing for them. It brought them to where they are. But they don't see that as a problem. They'll keep doing the same things they were doing. Now can you imagine that pastor that I prayed for that was jumping on the bed possessed from three months old. Imagine that you are one of those that came to me and when I finish trying to tell you, listen, let me reshape your mind. That you got to take time. You got to sit, you got to learn, you got to grow. When you hear that, you just want a laying on of hands and then you run back. Imagine if there was a person from there that was sitting under that man's ministry, came here and I tried to tell them and they ran back and sat there and they expect God. What this man is flowing, remember I taught you a few weeks ago how energy flows from a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. So if he's got evil energy in him which that spirit was dominating. When he is preaching, that evil energy will flow to the receiver. If you are sitting there, you are receiving. And so, imagine the power that is over this person. This person does not want to change. This person wants to stay the way they are. Sit next to the friends that make them comfortable. The chair that they marked in that place. They want to go sit there. And that will make them feel nice. But the spirit that is inside, can you imagine? The devastation of those people's lives. Many may have even committed suicide. Now, there, there was, you know, when, when I, before I started Trinity International, God put this in my heart. 
I had no ought against anybody. God put this in my spirit. I am ready to take you on your own. And so I discussed it with Nash. And the two of us discussed it. And I said, it's time now. And when I went to the church I was serving and it was a massive church. And people were thinking, the pastor, that we have something against them. But we didn't. It's, it's a calling that God put in my spirit. There were a few things that I'm, I wasn't happy with. But anywhere that you go, nothing will be perfect. But it's not about anybody. It's about what God put in my heart. So what I did is, it was, a, it was a midweek meeting, but it was like a crusade because they had a guest speaker that came. He came from, if you know Durban, from Newlands. He came on the stage and he was preaching. And I was one of the leaders. I was standing in the front row. But there was crowds of people. There's thousands of people that were there. And I was one of many people. This man who was preaching had no idea who I was because I wasn't even dressed in a suit. And so all the men, women were strewn all over the altar area, standing up, clapping. And suddenly, this preacher who had no idea who I was, whether I was a full-time pastor, whether I was just a visitor, whether I was a member, he had no idea. He turned and looked me directly in my eye. And these are the words he told me. God said, do not move from this church. You know, I got a stun. How? How does this man know I'm even planning to go on my own? God said, this is your place. You stay here. Do not open anywhere. Stay in this place. And he almost came back to himself. When I look back, I know Onias and gang were inside of him. Because they, they heard the conversation I was having with Nash. And this man doesn't know me from a bar of soap. He doesn't know I was full time in that church. He had no idea. I barely knew him. Even as a guest, big guest speaker. And few, and when we opened, I didn't listen to him because God spoke this to my heart. And I opened. Imagine how many people's lives would have been lost if I hadn't come to Trinity. How many people around the world today. You will have members who have decided to make their membership with us from India, from America, from Australia. They say we're not going to go anywhere now. We, you are our pastor. So I cannot let you down. You, I will be on air. But I pray that people are faithful so that we can continue in the work that we do. A few months after we opened, Open Trinity, and it, was, it was a struggle. And, and we heard that the same pastor that was standing on the stage and prophesied against my moving, he ran away with someone else's wife, one of the members, and he booked a hotel, he lost his whole church. Can you imagine what spirit was inside that man that was prophesying to me? Can you imagine the people who sit under his ministry, who sat and soaked in the energy from him when they were sitting and listening. Because goodness was not full in them. So whatever that man was spewing. You know high, high, a region of high concentration to a region of low concentration. So if you have more good in you. No evil can flow in you. That's if you don't embrace those words that come. Because they come with finer energies. The water bearer that is. He comes with finer energies. And he comes into you while you're sitting ordinarily in a church setting. But you don't know who's on that platform. And you're embracing it. Smiling, clapping, dancing, laughing. You don't know. It's coming into you. That's sometimes when you come and learn what I'm teaching you and then you go do that. That makes not all the effort you're putting in. And the devil will use these tools. So that he can cripple as many people as possible. They think they're walking correctly. But they're actually falling apart inside. So when, when I'm trying to teach you. Make sure your mind is set and concentrated. Make certain 
that the inner being of the person leading you, you know well. You can see evidence of the growth that is in your life. That when you listened and you followed exactly, you didn't go, sometimes we're allowed to fail, we go fall down, we wake up. I'm not saying you must be perfect, but on the whole, your lifestyle begins to improve. That is a sign you on your way to get God's power. Slowly it takes time. It takes prayer. It takes a dedication of, to righteousness. And the devil will try and knock you from all sides. But if you are in God, think about the things that are happening in your life right now. Think how it is sucking. You remember I told you last week, this demon was sucking the thumb of this little boy. That tells you sucking the energy. He was sucking the energy out of this boy. That's why this boy was losing weight, was getting drained. It was, a, it was a sort of an analogy to tell you what demons do. They suck the life out of you. And if you feel that your life is getting sucked out of you, I want to commit you to start watching these videos so that these sermons can build you and can start you on a new path. Don't treat this as a one-off. If you don't do this, you will continue for the rest of your life that waning away. And when you look back, you say, I did nothing. I always suffered. Now is the time to make that change. This is a life-changing day. Can I pray with you? Beloved, join me for prayer. Please raise your hands. Let's be earnest. This is not loose words I'm throwing to heaven. I'm throwing it on behalf of you. I'm giving God your heart. Let us pray with reverence. Heavenly Father, thank you for the thousands that watch. Thank you, Lord, for their hearts. I pray that we're going to make a change in your kingdom. In their lives, their prayer is going to become powerful. This message is an enemy of Satan, but we ask your angels to protect this sermon and send it through your children to as many that need salvation. As long as they become your child, Lord, we can start by reshaping them. Cover them with your precious blood, my God. I pray that as you write their name renewed in your book of life, that the Prince of Peace, Lord Jesus, would come and abide in them. That in their struggles, they will still have peace. And Lord, they will start to reshape even their physical lives. Whatever the canker worm and the caterpillar had stolen, you are going to restore it because they love you, Lord. Let them be able to put the effort in to listen, to learn, to pray, to fast. For some it will be hard, but Lord, give them the strength in the name of Jesus. Those that uh, want, to, want to go away from their marriages, I pray a restoration in Jesus' name. Those that are straying with other women, this is what Onias does. He tantalizes and he feeds the desires of people. Father, I cancel that work of Onias in the blood and name of Jesus Christ that people will start to have peace in their lives in Jesus name I pray and everybody said Amen wonderful Sunday to you all have a beautiful day I pray you will join me next week God bless you